Welcome machinist members and allies in the labor movement. This is the 141 Report, and I'm your host, Dave Lehigh, the communications representative for District Lodge 141. On today's program, we travel to Chicago, Illinois, to have a conversation with Brother Don Villar, who is the Secretary Treasurer of the Chicago Federation of Labor. Don and I will be discussing the recent community service action that was done by the CFL, its sister unions, including the IAM. We have lots to talk about as our 141 report starts now. Brother Don, welcome to the 141 Report. Thanks for accepting my invitation to come on and talk about the CFL. Thank you, Brother Dave, and thanks to our sisters and brothers and machinists there you know, for, for having me. We Great certainly appreciate it. So Don, uh, so we get started. Uh, can you please give the viewers uh, your background history on your work career and work in the labor movement? Sure, sure Dave. Uh, again, uh, I'm Don Villar, Secretary Treasurer here at the Chicago Federation of Labor. Uh, and prior, I, I was elected to uh, Secretary Treasurer of the CFL in uh, 2018. Prior to that, I was the president of the broadcast union here in Chicago, and NABAT's the other local 41. They represent um, photogs, editors, news writers, producers, technical people at the various TV stations here in Chicago. And prior to that, I spent 25 years in the newsroom as a news writer producer at the ABC uh, station here in Chicago. So and, and that's, uh, became a union member uh, at NABET starting in 1991 when I joined the, when I, when I got my first job here. But prior to that, I, I was also, so I, in college, I, I worked in the, worked as a, a night watchman here in town, member of SEIU Local One. Uh, and I come from a union household. My, my mother is a member of Unite Here, was a member of Unite Here Local One. Uh, at, the flight kitchens here in Chicago, the flight kitchens at O'Hare, uh, serving uh, you know serving up meals or preparing the meals for for in flight. Remember the time when we used to have food on the planes? I know <laughs> back in the day. So my mom and her co-workers and union members at Unite Here Local One, they're the ones that made the food, uh, the in-flight food. And I was born into the labor movement. My my father was on strike uh, when I was born, uh, he was striking for bank workers in the Philippines. Uh, so um, it, it sort of was, became part of me from, from, from birth. Uh, and you know, just this hunger for social justice, hunger for, you know, uh, when you see something wrong with workers, when you see mistreatment, when you see like you know, the injustice uh, towards the working class, like, man, it just gets me going. Um, and actually, you know, that was part of my formation uh, in the labor movement. I, I, when I got involved in my first contract against ABC, uh, Disney ABC, I was representing the news writers for the first time uh, in 2007 in negotiations at ABC. And I saw the unevenness of the, uh, the bargaining table. I mean, on the other side, you had like a dozen company lawyers telling you, you know, oh, we can't afford this. We can't afford that. And uh, by the way, we want more of this. This is Disney, ABC. These guys have a license to print money. And it's like, see, yeah, seeing that, seeing how the, the unevenness of the playing field is like, it's like, that ain't right. You know, why are they picking my po our pockets when, when these guys have a license to make money? I mean, billions of dollars every year. And you can't, you can't help out, you can't respect, uh, you can't value the workers that, that make it possible. So in actually in 2007, after this bargaining, where for the first time in a long time, we did not give anything up. And we got something in return. I got inspired. I said, you know what? I need to learn more about the la labor law. So I decided to uh, get a law degree. Uh, while working full-time at, at ABC, went to law school here in Chicago, Loyola, 
uh, law, Chicago, I, you know, finished law in three years and then passed the Illinois bar. And during all this time, just constant, you know, working and working for my union and uh, just committed to the cause. Uh, so along besides doing labor law and, and uh, labor advocacy, I also dabbled in some civil rights work. Uh, you know, again, fight, when you see something wrong, when you see injustice, when you see something get someone not being treated right, uh, it just got me going. And uh, that, so that's, that's what's, what I'm rooted in. Uh, we see a lot of injustice out there. Uh, okay. We see it at the workplace. Uh, we see how management treats us. We see a lot of, a lot of just the inequality, the the disrespect, the devaluing of our labor, of our work, and being uh, and workers being, being disrespected, and uh, that's that's why you know I, I get fired up. <laughs> so I get fired up for the fight every day. That's why I enjoy, you know, being here at the CFL. Uh, every day there's a fight. Whether and it's every day we when we see so much so much injustice, so many things wrong, we got we got we got to stand up. We got to do our right. We got to stand up. We got to try to make things right. Um, okay. So um, you know, I went over your bio, and I was you know I was so like amazed about everything that you've done. Uh, you've had a you've had quite a career. Um, you even won an, an Emmy. Which I think is is quite admirable when you see that. So, uh, you 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 are seem to be the right person for the CFL. So I got to ask you, what exactly does the CFL do? Could you explain that to our viewers? So, so the Chicago Federation of Labor, it's it's the a central labor council. So, uh, and we are the third largest central labor council in the country. Uh, more than half a million union members, men and women, in the city of Chicago and the county of Cook. Uh, our members of the, our, our union members, and we're the umbrella organization for all the unions in, in Chicago and Cook County. So about 300 local unions, union affiliate, lo local unions make up the CFL, and they in turn represent half a million working men and women. Um, so, and the CFL, you know, we're rooted in labor history. I mean, and we're, we, we sort of call ourselves the hometown. I know a lot of other CLCs, a lot of the other towns out there say, we're the hometown of the American labor movement. But we pride ourselves with that title because we have more local ones and local twos in our city than any other city in the country or any other region in the country. So, you know, a lot of these unions formed here and, uh, and spread around and, and grew all over the country. Yes. And so a lot of great things. I mean, and it's sort of, it comes on the streets. It's, it, they grew out of the streets of Chicago because you, you got to think about we were, a lot of stuff in labor history started here. The Haymarket, uh, the Haymarket affair. We just celebrated May Day. Yep. You know, uh, two we weeks teach that in all our education classes. Right. Yep. And it started in Chicago when, uh, you know, workers demanding an eight hour workday. And, uh, and a weekend, you know, and just getting sick and tired of, of being abused, you know, they took to the streets and, and those workers and then they rounded up the labor leaders in you know, 1886, they rounded up the labor leaders in the city and they put them to death. And they had nothing to do with, with, with the bomb. They weren't even near uh, the massacre, the, the, bio, the, the riot that took place on the West side. It's actually just a, just a few blocks west of where I'm at is the Haymarket. We have a statue there, but it started here in Chicago and all over the world. Every May Day, they remember the Haymarket martyrs, those those labor leaders, those activists who who died, uh, you know, calling for justice for working for work, the working class. Um, so besides the Haymarket, which is such a big part of the labor movement, that's where the American labor movement started. The fight for you know uh, the eight hour day and the weekend. Also here in town is Pullman, uh, and Pullman and the great railway strikes. Right. You know, that it, it, it all happened in Chicago on the south side when, you know, again, the, in, the injustice that workers face. I mean, here, it's like, you know, they're, they're already working there. They have to, you know, shop at the company store. They live in the company house. And at the end of the day, they got nothing after the company pays them. And just the inequity. So in Pullman, what, you know, after the, the, uh, the boss there, they, they cut the people's wages. But and they raise the rent and the food, like yeah. just taking advantage of the workers. 
and, and treating them, I mean, just devaluing them and treating them like slaves, which is what old man Pullman looked at, uh, you know, treated, treated his workers. You know, you're lucky to work here. <laughs> and by the way, you're going to pay me this to live and work in, in my company town. It's like, what's that all about? And, and that strike that, at Pullman where they brought in the National Guard and it shut down railways, I mean, the uh, train traffic all over the country. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the Union Stockyards, uh, the, the book by Upton Sinclair, The Jungle, that led to, you know, workplace safety, the, the first round of workplace safety that we see in this country. Eventually led yeah. to the rail, eventually led to the Railway Labor Act. Exactly. Because they know the, right, because it was just happening all across the country. And right. The Railway Labor Act, it eventually morphed into the airlines. And that's the territory that I come out of. And that's what we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about. So, brother, I, I got to know from you that uh, this past weekend, you had a very successful uh, event at the, near the Chicago airport. And mm -hmm. I wanted you to kind of tell the story about what took place there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah absolutely, brother Dave. I, one of the things, this pandemic, it's taken a toll out of so many workers, especially our aviation workers, people who work at the airports and transportation. So we have seen so many workers furloughed, out of work, union members. So this is a case of union members helping union members. So uh, this weekend, you know, the day before Mother's Day, we, uh, we, we helped about almost 400 families, you know, provided them a meal. Uh, uh, about, we distributed 1,600 pounds of food uh, you know, to, to families. And these are union members, union members who work at the airport or who've been furloughed from working at the airport and are, 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 who've lost, you know, who, who had their time, or their, you know, their hours cut because of the, the slowdown at the airport. So that's what we did this week, weekend. Uh, it, it's been such, it was such a great event. Um, so many union members came out to volunteer to help load up these boxes of food and, uh, you know, for these workers. And, you know, for many of these workers, it's like, you know, especially coming on Mother's Day, the day before Mother's Day, you know, the, these families like, oh, you know, it's been a struggle. It, it, was, it was an important event for for this, um, the CFL to organize, help organize. And, and I know mm -hmm. you worked with several labor unions that were there. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I, I do have two very brief videos. Uh, one was from the Bricklayers Union and one from the AFA uh, CWA. So mm -hmm. let's take a real quick look at those clips. Uh, how you doing? My name is Juan JJ Coyer, Local 21 Bricklayers and Allied Craft Workers. We have our tile division, our PCC division. We have their families with us. We have our apprentices helping out. I'd like to thank Don Villar and every the machinist union for having us out. It's a great event, supporting the neighborhood, the community, our local brothers and sisters. Um, I just hope they keep having more of these. You know, let's stay, stay together, stay union strong, support unions. Hi, Jake Fisher from uh, AFA Council 8, CWA 24008. And uh, we're here today with a bunch of other unions. We've got machinists with us, we've got gate agents, tons of unions just getting some food to some needy families. And uh, thankfully the sun's almost out, so we're not freezing. So what did you think of that, huh? It's, it's great having the bricklayers and the AFA, and I know you had a bunch of other labor unions that were there. Oh yeah, it's so great to see them. You know, uh, our, our flight attendants, our, our CWA uh, members at the gates, uh, and, and the bricklayers uh, who are working out in the airfield. You know, and just and doing all the construction around the airport. And so many unions uh, came out. I mean, uh, Transport Workers Union, SEIU Local One, United Here Local One, uh, painters, the laborers, uh, IATSE, stagehands, uh, and sheet metal workers, uh, Teamsters were there. Uh, we had and um, steel workers, musicians, uh, musicians and carpenters. So we had various members of the Chicago labor movement uh, helping, help, hey, members so helping members. Can can you tell us about how the how the IAM helped in this event? Oh, uh, and, you know, again, uh, so much. You know, thanks for you know to the IAM, uh, the uh, for the lodge to provide their, to let us use their parking space, uh, their, their their parking lot. That's a huge facility that they have the, there at 1487. Glad right. that, you know, the, uh, the machinists could help out and, you know, setting all that up and working with the other various labor unions to mm -hmm. distribute that food. So, 
Absolutely. It, it was perfect because it's right, it's near the airport. So workers uh, uh, can, can swing by and the parking space was perfect. Because, yeah, again, it's a large parking space to accommodate all these people, all uh, 400 families, nearly 400 uh, families. Are there, are there any machines people that you might want to make mention of? Oh, I need to, need to give a shout out to Dave Roderick and Ann Clifford. They have been so helpful in putting, putting these together. Uh, their support has been you know, you know, amazing. Was, we've, this is yesterday or this past weekend or uh, Saturday the 8th was our third uh, food, dist uh, food distribution at the airports. We did two at O'Hare and one at Midway airports. And again, all of the, we, here in Chicago at the CFL, we created what's called the airport labor committee. So all the unions, all the various unions that, that are at O'Hare or Midway, we come together uh, in, mo in solidarity and in mobilization and, and, and anything just to sort of build that, you know, build the power of the movement. You and, guys did, I was going to say, you guys uh, did an event, you said at the airport, and I remember when that event took place, that was a pretty cold day that you guys were out there. <laughs> yeah, that was a, geez, I, I think we were, we were probably in the teens Yep. Not, yeah, teen, oh, and it was windy as heck. So you got the you know, wind chills around zero. Uh, and yeah, the, the first event, I mean, it was around Halloween uh, and boy, it got really cold as in the early morning uh, out at the airfield, you know, that wind coming off of that field. <laughs> it's, it, it was nasty, but um, it, you know what, despite that cold weather, the, the, that fire of uh, the labor movement that kept everybody warm. Uh, and the fire of the labor movement, the fire of you know helping each other, helping helping all these families. I mean, there's one member, you know, who uh, this one family member. It's like it was, it, it it was so moving for them because they they didn't have anything in the kitchen. They've been struggling to make ends meet uh, since being furloughed, and uh, it's just that you know seeing you know, finally I got I could I got food because uh, it was a week's worth of food for these families just a struggle and so many stories about the, these union members it's through no fault of their own right people lost their jobs people were, were fur furloughed and it was such a moving experience i mean for especially for all the volunteer union members uh because it just the, the the gratitude on a lot of the members face for faces for like hey thank you <laughs> always a good thing uh, so before we finish out the report uh, would you like to make mention of anything else about the CFL and perhaps the relationship you have with the machinist union? Oh, yeah. yeah the, the machinists have been a big part of the, the CFL. Uh, the machine uh, here in town, uh, actually one of our secretary treasurers uh, from the 80s, oh, geez, I shouldn't put that, <laughs> was a member of uh, Machinist Local 126. And 100 years ago, I mean, the machinists have always been part of the CFL. Uh, but uh, locally on our board, we have a mechanics local 701 machinist. Uh, and again, it, it's such a big part of here in, here in the city of Chicago, uh, the various bargaining units, various industries that, that mach the machinists are at, right? I mean, we're talking about in the city, the public sector, in manufacturing industry, uh, across in, in transportation logistics and at our airports, right? And, uh, and a railway, the trains. The machinist uh, TCU members, machinist TCU, right? Uh, and we we can't, I mean, Chicago can't move without our, our, our brothers and sisters uh, uh, machinists. At the airports, uh, especially, airport, especially local 1487. That's a huge local. It's got over 5,000 machinist members out of that local. Absolutely. So it's, it's a huge local. And they're, they're proud members of District 141. Yeah. Oh, and they're great people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this uh, this wraps up this week's 141 report. I want to thank you, Brother Don, uh, for telling the viewers about the importance of community service action by uh, various unions in Chicago. And thanks again for coming on today's program. You, you got it, Dave, and thanks for having me. And th thank you to our brothers and sisters with the, sh with the machinists. Okay, great. And to our 141 ma machinist members, we want to remind our members and families that we're still accepting essays for the Adolph Stutz District 141 Scholarship Contest. Uh, for details, please visit im141.org on the website. Uh, please also remember your mobile device is always at your fingertips uh, to give you updates from our union. You can uh, help inform other union members when you like, share, follow, and subscribe to our several social media platforms. 
finally, to all our viewers, thank you for tuning in this week. Everyone have a safe weekend. Bye for now.